Welcome back to Meaningful Conversations Live. This is Beata severin reed and I'm here with you live every Tuesday at noon Mountain Standard Time. Every week also, I bring amazing speaker, change maker, to bring awareness, inspire transformation, and encourage you to create your own change in your life. And today I'm very, very happy to have Imani Capri, oh my goodness, Yay. radio personality, author, writer, motivational speaker, Reiki practitioner, Oh my gosh, what else? I'm not sure she will tell you <laughs> much. Welcome to the show, Mani. Thank you. So happy to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Is there is if there is any other uh, part of your life that I didn't mention in you do just tell us about you. I'm just a woman on a mission to help people get in relationship with their greatness. That's the most important thing people should know about me. Aside from all of those other titles and things, uh, I just want to help people ignite the greatness and power that they have within. So, yes. Amen. And you are a great person to Thank you. To share the greatness with others. But today we're going to talk about maintaining emotional balance during times of crisis. So my first question to you is, how do you define emotional balance? We all live in times of crisis since 2020, the end of 2019. Yes, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus. People are struggling with life basically their the rate of divorce depression anxiety stress is very high so how do you define emotional balance that's a really great question and no one has asked me that question before but i think how i define emotional balance is feeling good inside of myself feeling confident or hopeful that no matter what is going on, I can, I'm going to get through it. Um, balance to me just means everything is in perspective. Like I'm not too, I'm not too hyped up, like over hyping something. And I'm also not like super depressed about it or taking a woe is me. Like this situation is never going to change type of uh, mentality or attitude or vibration. So I think emotional balance is just doing what you need to do to feel centered inside of yourself and to have that feeling like, okay, I can make my way through this. I may not know all the hows and all the specifics, but whatever it is, I'm not going to allow it to have me like too far this way or too far that way. I'm just going to try to be centered, you know, and, and focus on the things that are within my control, which is kind of like the first of my five tips for creating emotional balance. Uh, we're going to go to your five tips uh, mm -hmm. on creating emotional balance in a second, but I'd be a little bit mean right now, probably, because mm -hmm. I don't believe in balance like generally, mm -hmm. because we, we live in a constant change. So life is never in balance. And this is the beauty, which also upsets us very often mm -hmm. because we want to be centered. And I love what you said, that the balance, it, there is never a balance, it's illusion really, but we can create the feeling of balance, the feeling centered mm -hmm. basically every single day and it's uh, about what am I in control of and what I can let go of. You said it beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, I see how I have Rafa. Hello, Rafa, with us. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. almost 100 episodes. Yes, this is episode 98. Thank you so much for being Congratulations. Here. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, well, if... There are people that I can't see uh, because I'm using StreamYard. Please let us know that you are here. Say hi. And remember that you can always ask the question 
to Imani because she is live and she can respond whatever is bothering you as far as emotional balance. And Imani, so my uh, next question I think is pretty natural. I'm this, you know, I'm always curious. I'm like detective trying to, <laughs> to find out how people were able to come and become who they are today. And you are this beautiful, strong, powerful woman guiding others into their greatness. Uh, so have you ever been in imbalance in, in your life? So what was it? What kind of crisis or experience took you there? And what you did? How Absolutely. Did you um, I would say I probably spent the first part of my, a good portion of the first chapter of my life in, in out of balance, right? <laughs> and it wasn't something that I necessarily had control over, but I was a, a survivor of almost a decade of childhood sexual abuse. And so from the time I was about 10 years old until I was about 18 or 19, that was probably I wouldn't say it's the only, but one of the biggest crises, emotional crises that I have ever faced in my life. And it took me a really long time to be able to really face it and deal with it and heal from it. Um, but, you know, the way that I started reclaiming balance was getting real with myself about what had happened in the first place. You know, I was a person who my coping mechanism was not alcohol or drugs or a bunch of different relationships, but more staying busy, you know, drowning kind of my emotions in a flurry of activity constantly. And I had this kind of thought, you know, that if I stayed busy, I didn't really have time to kind of sulk and I didn't have to feel my feelings if I stayed busy. But guess what? That exploded in me having a nervous breakdown wow. <laughs> and having to be in the hospital on a psych ward for seven days. So um, it's funny how the very things that you try to avoid in life, just think, oh, I'll push forward. I'm fine. That thing is <laughs> over. It always finds a way of dragging you back to deal with it and confront it. You know, if you don't actually deal with it, there's a saying that you have to feel it to heal it. So, you know, having that nervous breakdown was really one of the best things that ever happened to me because it forced me to have to get really real with myself and in a space where there was really nothing else for me to do other than to maybe sleep and have some snacks and do a certain type of therapy. Um, and I also had the opportunity to meet some other individuals who had struggles that were way more serious than mine. So that was kind of like an eye opener to make me start sitting with my truth. And so kind of the more direct answer, I think to your question is, we have to be able to be real with ourselves and acknowledge what our authentic truth is before we can really get centered or achieve any type of uh, balance or harmony in ourselves and in our life. I love it. Oh, my gosh. And thank you for sharing this very personal story mm -hmm. with us. And I always admire people like you because just speaking about that kind of experience, first of all, brings memories that are painful. But I also find out on my own that speaking about painful experiences brings healing mm -hmm. and brings more I think that the, the well-being and the the center that you say it yes. centered me like that's okay it happened and now you said basically from what you said it didn't happen to you but for you so today you are you okay. have this foundation to guide others towards their greatness I love it and I love your mission. You said when you have the courage to heal and transform yourself, you can heal and transform the world. That is so beautiful. That is very beautiful. And you just said that healing starts from 
acknowledging the emotions that are in us. And it takes me to this conversation that I listened to yesterday. It was Michael, Revenant Michael Beckwith. Mm -hmm. And he said that every healing starts from awareness. Yes. Awareness of what happened, where are you at the moment, and then deciding what to do with these emotions. So if you can take us through your five steps, how to create emotion, emotional balance during crisis. Mm -hmm. We are living in crisis recently, very tough crisis, but come on, we always live in some kind of crisis, no matter what is happening. That's, that's very true. Um, but whether or not we are experiencing a crisis, I think everything that all has to do with our mindset and the things, us being able to recognize what we have the ability to control or influence. And so my first tip for creating emotional balance or centeredness is exactly that. Focus on what you have the ability to control or influence. Oftentimes, you know, our, our feeling powerless comes when we have kind of this mindset that we are victim to our external circumstances. You know, in my personal story and journey and getting through probably one of the biggest crises of my life. Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. He's like <laughs> moving we, around. We don't, but oh, good. Kind of, okay. I love dogs. Good, dogs. good. good. <laughs> so, yeah, one of the things that I had to kind of come to terms with is that as long as I was waiting for my abuser or certain family members to apologize to me, that I was keeping myself in this like powerless state. And that although what happened may not have been my fault or a direct uh, something that I caused, the healing of it was my responsibility. And that was a really hard place to get to. But once I got to that place, Bayada, um, and, and practicing Nichiren Buddhism and chanting Namyo Horenge Kyo helped me kind of start shifting my mindset to realizing that what I wanted my life to be was up to me mm. and that the cleanup job was up to me, but that if I had the courage to do the, the cleanup job and to take the focus off of external and bring it on the internal things, which is what we all have the ability to control or influence is what happens with us on the inside. Then I could start reclaiming my power and make changes. So that's the first tip. The second tip is process your emotions, but don't allow them to totally consume you. And so I would say a, another way to paraphrase that is, again, you have to feel it to heal it. You have to name it to tame it, right? We've probably heard some of these sayings before. When we stuff our feelings, they just explode later in some form or fashion for us to be forced to have to deal with them. Right. And usually that happens in circumstances that are less than ideal, like me having to go to the psych ward for a week because I have been suppressing and repressing. That was not the most ideal situation <laughs> that I wanted. You know, that, that's not really how I needed or wanted to deal with that. But, but it was necessary. Absolutely. I did decided now it's going to happen because that's you're right. never going to go through it. That's right. That's right. So allow yourself to feel whatever you feel, but just stay present to the fact that, you know, feelings are fleeting. Feelings are, are, are emotions are kind of temporal and temporary. Think about how many feelings or emotions you may have in the course of the day. You might wake up and feel really, really happy. And then you let your dog out to go to the bathroom and the dog runs out the yard, which is like what happened before I hopped on with you. And I, I went from feeling like happy to like panic, like, oh, my God, where's my fur child? You know what I mean? We go through these range of, of emotions. And so it's really important to. Maybe just take the perspective like I'm going to allow this feeling to pass through me. I'm going to observe it. I'm going to feel it. But I don't necessarily have to hold on to it or I don't necessarily have to allow it to just totally consume me. You know, and Mani, do you have any practice that you would recommend to our audience that you use for yourself or maybe with your clients 
Mm -hmm. how to process these emotions because you said process your emotion how what do you use for it so for me a couple of things that i do to process emotion i will journal journaling is a great tool um my girl <laughs> yeah i will listen i do this thing like music is so therapeutic for me, right? So we always hear people talking about the law of attraction and manifestation and this or that. So one way that I process my emotions is by tapping into music that speaks to wherever I am at that particular time. Something about listening to music that, that resonates with where I am, like helps me move through it. It helps me feel whatever I need to feel. And then it also helps me kind of be able to transition, right? You know, if you're kind of in a blue blue mood and you listen to those songs that kind of pull that out, at least for me, eventually I get to a point where I'm like, okay, enough of this. Like, <laughs> it's time to, all right, you know, like the person broke your heart or this didn't work out or didn't meet your expectations. You know, this is what happens in life, but there's other great things to look forward to. You know what I mean? So journaling, music. Uh, my spiritual practice, having a consistent spiritual practice, I think is really important too, because it helps keep us grounded. It helps us plug into an energy that is is bigger than us. It helps us, you know, kind of reflect on and move our ego out of the way, which sometimes our emotions and our ego, uh, you know, they wrestle with one another. Um, and if we can kind of recenter ourselves spiritually, sometimes we can have a different perspective that will help us shift emotions, especially some of the lower, lower vibrational emotions, but journaling music, my spiritual practice of chanting Namyo Horenge Gyo. I am a, a Reiki practitioner <clears throat> in two systems of Reiki. So doing Reiki on myself, like balancing my chakras, getting my energy centers together is another thing that I do. Um, when I have felt like I needed it, I have done several rounds of therapy. You know, that is a, a, actually that's towards the end of my steps, but reaching out to others and, and relying on a support system. And I me. think we are going here to back to this awareness that mm -hmm. I can be healed. I just need to ask for help and find the sources that yes. they will work the best for me. And is there any Reiki practice that anyone can do to balance our emotions without being a practitioner? Um, That's a great question. So you can Google about Reiki and watch some videos to kind of learn about Reiki and maybe how to use some of the Reiki on yourself. Of course, practitioners are trained on how to help people um, Reiki is basically just like open, allowing yourself to be an open channel for universal love, light, healing, divine yeah. energy, right? So a Reiki practitioner is trained in how to be a facilitator in helping you to uh, absorb that energy into your own energy field. The practitioner also works with your higher self in uh, bringing, you know, helping to bring a restore balance in your energetic body, helping you to release anything energetically we need to let go of. So yeah, there are things you can research online about Reiki and maybe some that you can do on your own. However, Reiki is a very powerful practice for helping us shift things energetically. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that you not jump into you know, taking on shifting your energy by yourself, but get with somebody that you can trust who can help you along that practice. You know, one thing I, I would interject is that everything is energy. Yes. And everything starts on an energetic level before it manifests into the physical realm, right? So right. if we have some type of imbalance energetically, before it manifests, in physical form and sometimes like those things that we refuse to feel and refuse to address and heal, they can manifest later on as illnesses in the body and all these things, but they start as an energetic imbalance. So when you do energy work, 
you 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 want to work with somebody who kind of knows what they're doing because there may be things that you're not consciously aware of that you're you're releasing or needing to release, right? But that's not to discourage anybody from yeah, researching about Reiki. Absolutely. Online, finding mm -hmm. your yes, favorite tool for healing, it's also part of searching. Yes. And a basic kind of like a, a basic premise of Reiki that your listeners can practice too. They don't have to be practitioners or certified to do this. We have so much energy and healing power in our hands, right? So sometimes if you just use your hands, you know, if you're, if you're thinking a lot, you know, place your hands over your head and just breathe. Mm -hmm. That is kind of that is kind of what happens in a Reiki session when someone's when a practitioner is working with your chakras in different places, they're taking placing their hands and energy is flowing through them into your energy centers or they are working, maybe if not physical touch in your energy field doing that. But you can take your own hands and put them over your heart, you know, and just deep breathing can help us shift our perspective, too. So that is kind of like. Reiki light that you can do on your own, All right? And, uh, help yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I personally experienced uh, Reiki power. Oh my gosh, it took me on one of the most crazy and beautiful journeys. Yes, yes, that uh, it's out of this world. So it's, I think you have to experience that to really know what yes. I'm talking about. But okay, so let's go back to the uh, steps. First, yes. we'll focus on the uh, ability of what you can control. Second, process your emotions, but don't let them to overcome you, overwhelm yeah. you. Mm -hmm. What is the third one? The third one, don't rush the process of your inner reflection and adjusting to the frequent changes that are taking place around us. Mm, it's really okay. important to take time to acknowledge and reflect on what what's happening, you know, and at the time that I put these together, this was when COVID first hit. Um, and so I was saying it's important for us to take time to reflect on what the, what changes in society are occurring and how it's making you feel and what they mean to you. You know, so I think allowing your emotions to consume you is not the same as just taking time to reflect and be your own best friend. Kind of ask yourself, well, how does this make me feel? Sometimes we we react to things so much that we don't really sit down and reflect. And so right. reflecting is really checking in with yourself and saying, well, how does this make me feel? And what what is it that is within my power to do something about this? You know, a lot of people felt very frustrated or anxious when we first had to go into quarantine, remember everybody, their anxiety was coming up in like the over purchasing of toilet paper. Oh my gosh. That, that is probably in 20 years, they're gonna, you know, do pictures like post pictures, memes and all this yeah. stuff. And yeah. we will yeah. laugh. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. And especially but older ladies here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, they were fighting for paper. Like really, there was a the last one, and I was picking it up, and this lady's like, "No, it's mine!" I said, all right, all right, take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, sit time and, and take time to reflect on how you feel, and be kind to yourself, and give yourself what you need to feel better that's healthy you know we don't we don't want to turn to things that are not healthy for us to help us feel better but taking time to just kind of reflect and check in with yourself so that you can you can figure out what are the adjustments you need to make that put you in a more centered space that's tip number three don't rush the process of your inner reflection and time to adjust to changes happening around you and the Time to adjust. The adjusting part is huge. It's yeah, it is. Not, not only for time of crisis, but any change, not just crisis, any change in your life. You have to give yourself time for adjusting and adapting. I know what I'm saying. I was adapting to a new culture. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And when you do, it's it's really interesting because think about where we were at the beginning of the pandemic as compared to now. Right. We, even though it's still very serious and, yes. and we have a ways to go, we've adjusted to wearing the masks. I mean, those who wear them have adjusted Absolutely. in the beginning. We're like, oh my God, I can't breathe. You know what I mean? Like this is so suffocating. <laughs> like you, everything about our comfort zone had, right. had been challenged. You couldn't go hang out in places where you used to hang out. You couldn't necessarily be with people that you were used to being around. You know, your job situation may have changed, but as we have moved along, people have made their adjustments. And, you know, I mean, the reality is a lot of people are still struggling through this. So I don't, I don't ignore that or take that. For Absolutely. Granted, but yes. But, but on the other hand, many people adjusted. Yes. And actually the, this anxiety is not that high anymore for some people. I'm not also saying for everyone, but we are humans that we always are able adjust. What and is many, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say to that point, and many people, not only did they adjust, but they found a way to thrive too. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So number four is reorganize your priorities, asking yourself what is truly most important to you now. And I think this was so timely at the beginning of COVID. And I think it's good to kind of just check in with yourself every so often and, and look at what are you prioritizing? Family love, your purpose, you know, it's very important to get clear on what matters to you the most and then to start doing what feels the best for you to do. And so a lot of people at the beginning of quarantine definitely had time to reflect. We were forced to reflect if you weren't already in that kind of vibe. And many people, you know, went back and said, I do need to rearrange my priorities. I've spent so much time, you know, pouring into my job that I forgot about things that actually made me happy. Or I'm so used to being in uh, the go, 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 go kind of mode, which is part of like American culture, that it feels good to like actually stay home with family. Now people are saying this like the first week, maybe after the first two months, they're like, oh my God, enough of the family. You know what right. I mean? But um, reorganize your priorities. Reorganize your priorities in a way that makes you feel good, a way that feels like this is this is the right combination. Nothing feels worse than like prioritizing things that you really don't feel good about or that don't set your soul on fire or make you happy or just not authentic to who you are. So I think when you when you start assessing what you have the ability to control and influence and then you start priority, prioritizing things in a way that lines up more with who you feel you really are, what you really desire, that's the best type of feeling. I and love that I love what you just said. Uh, one of the questions, what matters, what really matters for you? after what what we are living for because you not only you but we all had to reorganize our lives and i don't know if you agreed but at the beginning of our conversation you said that basically you were pushed into facing what you were suppressing the emotions yes. that you were suppressing in you and i feel like i don't know i'm not god so i don't know but i feel like the world really pushed us to also to slow down and yes. look on the inside and reorganize our lives by creating the situation that we live right now in. Like you said, some people are still struggling, but some find found out that they are actually thriving and creating new businesses, more space for their family, different types of uh, hobbies so that is so beautiful all right i'm sorry for disturbing we were at no not at all four. Mm -hmm. yeah I, before we go to point five i just was gonna say too you know a, another thing we don't know how much time we have on the planet and i think covid really brought that to the forefront of our awareness you know that we may be thinking we have 20 years, 30 years, maybe we do, maybe we don't. A lot of people lost loved ones that they never expected they were going to lose. Right. 
you know, so I think that's something else when, when we look at these different tips, focusing on what we have the ability to control, processing our emotions, not rushing that process of inner reflection and reorganizing our priorities. We should always be mindful that, you know, if you only had two more days or if you only had this 24 hours, what would you be doing that would make you feel fulfilled and balanced mm -hmm. and centered? And whatever those things are, that's what we should be doing consistently. So the last tip is seek and ask for help. Amen. It's, yeah, it's really OK to be vulnerable and to let other people in. Um, you know, even though we have made adjustments and are further along in dealing with the pandemic, it's so important to stay connected to people and content and energy that lifts you up, not, you know, things that pull you down or make you feel like there's no hope or there's no reason to continue. You know, it's, it's very important to seek help and connect with other people. Absolutely. And I think in some cultures, basically, I'm talking a lot about uh, my country back in Poland. When I used to back in Poland, and I noticed also a little, at least a little bit here, asking for help is, uh, it used to be, so it, it used to be like uh, treated like a weakness. Like if I ask for help, it means that I don't know how to take care of myself or that I'm less or not enough. And it's, not true. It's what is the biggest bias that we can ever leave. Asking for help, I want to highlight it, is actually a strength. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, is. I, I just want to, like, what is your view on that? I totally agree with you. And I think that there is a similar, there is a similar feeling in this country sometimes. I think that asking for help could be a sign of weakness in some ways, but uh, bottom line is we're all in this together, whether we want to be or not, <laughs> we are. And I think COVID also highlighted for us how deeply connected we all are and how one person literally can change the world, right? Because allegedly coronavirus started, one individual was sick that they knew of, right? right. And now we have a global pandemic. So conversely, we can take our power and use it for good to help each other in those same ways as well. You know, so I, again, like seeking help to me is a true sign of strength because it demonstrates, first of all, that there's a, a need and right. that you're aware that there is a need and then you're doing something about it, which is yes. powerful within itself, right? Like knowing that there's something that needs to be addressed and you don't do anything about it or you don't seek resources or get help, like that's weak, in my opinion, because you're 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 letting something literally kind of like take away your power. Whereas seeking help is you taking charge of whatever it is that you may be seeking help for or with. Absolutely. And I love what you just said. And I want to highlight it because we talk about healing and that it starts with awareness. And it's so true. But there is nothing going to change without your participation. So action, taking, yes. taking charge of your own life. It's mm -hmm. very important. Thank mm -hmm. you so very much. Thank I you. have um, Dr. Or. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember how to pronounce your name, but thank you so much for uh, being here with us. He has very cool also show. Thank you for listening to us. And Joanna, Joanna. Hey, Bridget, Joanna. Yes, we love you. Hello. And also Nom Pemelele, very profound. Absolutely, that is so true. We have a profound conversations here today. Thank you for being with us, for listening and tuning in. Please remember to share because you never know who might need to hear that conversation. Yeah. Okay, so beautiful Imani, what Thank is you. the best way to contact you, to find you? The best way to find me right now is on my social media. You can follow me, the Imani Capri page on Facebook, on Instagram, I am underscore Imani Capri. If you're on Clubhouse, then I am Imani underscore Capri. Mm -hmm. Yes. And basically, if you Google her name, 
you all see her because she has two beautiful, very profound as well shows. And tell us where where people can tune in. Yes, yeah, so I host two radio shows on 95.9 FM here in Cleveland, Ohio, but you don't have to be here to tune in. You can go to wovu.org online and listen from anywhere in the world. You can also download the WOVU app. I host a show on Tuesdays, the one that you came on, Beata, Conversations Encourage with the girl Imani Capri is on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, Thursdays, I host Truth Be Told at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same station, wovu.org online. And that show is dedicated to shifting the culture and conversation around sexual assault, abuse, rape, human trafficking, domestic violence, and all related issues uh, to one of education, healing, empowerment, and transformation. Conversations and Courage is the show where I interview interesting people who are doing positive and powerful things with a courageous spirit all around the world. So those are my two shows. And did you notice she has this radio voice? Yes. Come on, just join me. Yes. And you just, you know, you just fall in love with that voice. Oh, I highly you. encourage everyone to follow uh, Imani, find out more about her and reach out if you feel like you can connect. And yes, she she went through a lot so she can speak from her own experience. And thank you so much. Thank you. Well, it was a really great okay. pleasure to, to have you on my show. Thank you so much. And I hope you will be back uh, another time. Sure, and invite me. Thank you so much for the invitation today. The last thought that you would like to leave our audience with. Oh, the last thought. Can be your favorite quote, whatever you would you like. You know, to. this is something that I have, I have been processing and I've shared it on social media and several people have said, oh my God, I needed to hear that. Thank you so much for sharing it. So what I'm going to share is reframe how you look at losses. Mm, love it. Every loss is not an L, right? We have like in, in slang in this country, sometimes if you lose or things don't work out, you say sometimes you just got to take your L's like L for loss. But I want you to reframe your L's. Every loss is not an L. In fact, some losses really are launches. Some mm -hmm. losses are launches into your next level of greatness, into your next level of power, into your next level of strength, into your next level of self-love, into your next level of wisdom, resilience, creativity. We can go down the list, right? There is no testimony in life without a test. There is no elevation in life without an exam. And we all have unique test questions. And sometimes those test questions come in the form of what appears to be a loss. But the way that you pass the test is the perspective you choose to take and whether or not your perspective empowers you. And then you send a signal to the universe that, you know what, I passed this test because I'm taking the perspective that gives me power, not takes my power away. And then you can move off into your next level. So reframe your L's. Not every loss is, in fact, a loss. A lot of times losses can be launches to your next level. That's my message. Mm, I love it. What a beautiful to end that conversation. Thank you so very much. Thank you everyone who joined us. And if you are joining us on the replay, please leave a comment, share with your friends and family because we are still living in times when we need each other. So, I mean, we always need each other, but especially now when the stress is still high and the unknown of where this crisis are going to take us. So this type of conversations, I'm sure, because I, I personally enjoy them, can help you to raise your awareness and find some, like Imani just mentioned, the five uh, steps to work with your emotions. You, it's for free please share with everyone who might benefit. Thank you so much. See you next Tuesday at noon. 
And if you want to find out about me, your host, please go to my website, Beata, B-E-A-T-A, lifecoaching.com. Can I say one more thing? Yes, please do. That was just, if you want a copy of those five tips, it's a free download. The link on my Instagram page, I am underscore Imani Capri. You can download it right there. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everyone.